Hello, my fellow hunters, and welcome to the secrets of the Rotten Vale. I love talking about the world of Monster Hunter, its creatures, its environments, the lore, the implications. And the Rotten Vale has one terrifying implication. The Rotten Vale, as some of you may already know, but from the amount of people that still are blown away by this information when I share it, a lot of you probably don't, is mostly made up, especially the top section, of the skeleton of the largest creature in the Monster Hunter lore. An elder dragon by the name of Dalamadur. A giant serpent of such colossal size and power that while sleeping, yeah, you know when you're just about to go to sleep and, and just before you drift off, it's like, uh, you like, have like a little jump, like, oh, like a little jerk awake. Yeah, yeah, that, that. When Dalamadur does that in its sleep, it's like, whoops, I raised a mountain. My bad. What you like, Steve? Ho, ho, hiss. And... <laughs> Oh, oh, hit! And uh, now I'm imagining Santa with a snake head. Either way, this thing is huge. It's 400 plus meters long. It first was introduced and you first fight it in Monster Hunter 4. And it was an incredible sight to behold. Running up its body, leaping onto its head and getting a few cheeky cars in because you know your teammates are going to cart any second. It was an impressive battle, especially the first time around. Got a bit tedious to farm, but still, it was ridiculously awesome. Fighting it at the top of this mountain, this behemoth serpent coiled round looking down on you, able to eat you in one bite without a hesitation, and for some reason it lets you slowly stab it to death while it kind of flails and not really hits you, but that's not what we're here to discuss. What we're here to discuss is the terrifying implications of the skeleton Dalamadur found in the Rotten Vale, at least initially, because a lot of people have discovered this. I saw it as soon as I went there. I thought it was awesome and nice little touch, because, yeah, if the Rotten Vale is where all Elder Dragons go to die, then that includes all Elder Dragons, right? So even the bigger, more powerful stuff. This does mean, then, that they could viably and justifiably add any Elder Dragon, newly invented or old, to the game, and it would make sense. It's finally dying, and it's coming to the Vale to, well, die. Except maybe Fatalis who were supposedly kind of like semi-immortal because even though you can kill them and craft their armor hunters wearing their armor have reported that it, it grows back like the armor grows and it seals them in the armor then they go missing and a new fatalis is said to be created it, it, he's kind of mystically strong but I would still wager that the adult Dalamadur skeleton, if it was alive, would be more powerful than it. At least in a one-on-one -on -one combat, if we ignore any kind of mystical force. Because it could eat it in one bite many, many, many times over. Like, ridiculous. Like, I, 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 look, we're going to get into this, but you just you wait for the scale of this thing. And notice how I said adult, because that's the implication here. That's what's so scary. The 400 meter long plus one that we fought... It, it, it's got to be a baby. baby, or at least a juvenile at most, because it is tiny compared to the skeleton that you walk on, in, and around. I mean, if you look at the map, we have the head, and then all of these pathways are the body of this thing, but it, it, it's difficult to comprehend just how huge a full-grown Dalamadur is. It's got to have died of old age, because nothing's killing this bastard. We, 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 ah, okay, let me, let me try and put it into some numbers that can be appreciated. So this right here, right, this is one of its vertebrae. This is just a section of its spine, okay? And if we put a radabar next to it, it's about the same length. This is a rough guesstimation. Nope. You know, I'm I'm using units of radabar. We know radabar is around 18 meters long. So that means one section of spine on an adult Dalamadur is 18 meters long. And if we look at the skeleton of a snake, we can see that each bit of vertebrae isn't really taking up that much space in the grand scheme of the body. Imagine if each of these little sections are 18 meters long. Yeah! So, we can use this to work out the diameter of what should be an adult Dalamadur. And it's about 60 meters. Yep, 
a snake that's 60 meters thick. And if we compare this to, to Titan Boa, the largest snake ever to have existed, at least as far as we know, it had a diameter of a meter and grew up to 15 meters in length. Now, snake width to length isn't universal a ratio, but it's as good as we're going to get. So at minimum, a adult Dalamadur is a thousand meters long. Let me, let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. A thousand meters long. Granted, it, it is closer to 900 or so, but we have no idea which part of the body this vertebrae is from. Dalamandur's skeleton is a little bit different because it does have tiny little feet, which it uses to grip onto the mountains. But if we look at the head comparison, the zone I'm running through right now is the skull of the adult Dalamandur. It, it's that big. And the teeth here that we're going towards are larger than the hunter. The teeth on the one that we killed in the previous game were about a quarter of the size of the hunter, maybe a bit bigger. But you can appreciate the difference. This would scale it to at least a mile in length. I Just, is that not? Why is no one else bringing this up? Okay? This makes it unconditionally, unquestionably the largest, most powerful, the most daunting and terrifying creature in Monster Hunter. Even lowballing the numbers, there is nothing shy, maybe Zora Magdaros, another Dalamadur, and Laviente that this thing couldn't just kill in one bite. Never mind kill, swallow. It, it, it's mind-bogglingly massive. Excuse me? Okay, no, all right, it's bug smushing time. Now try and pretend it wasn't you. I see you walking away from me. <sighs> so imagine an event where you can take all 16 hunters at once to fight an adult Dalamadur that's coming to die in the veil. How cool would that be? Maybe when you kill it, the energy of such a colossal beast is what activates an adult Xenojiva to then fight as a sign of G-rank special event. But either way, the point remains, and what I really want to get across is... is, is oh, you see the spines on a Dalamandur, they hooks that let it grip to mountains as it burrows through, because it's still very much an animal, it's not got unnatural powers or really anything like that, it just, you know, it lives its giant snaky life, and it is considered to be the most dangerous creature that the baby- OH MY GOD! Dalamandur likes to make its homes near populated areas, which means it's a constant threat to the guild, the guild's the monitoring society for hunts, and there's a whole load of cool law that I, I kinda wanna talk about at some point. Would you, would you like more general law? Law videos? I think that actually could be really cool. But either way, if they considered the baby to be the most dangerous creature they're monitoring, imagine their faces if they see an adult one. And it's not even the only skeleton, right? There is two Dalamadur skeletons in the veil. There's another set of jaws lower down near Val Hazak's area. You can drop two of its fucking teeth onto Val when you're fighting him. It's absolutely mental. A mile long Elder Dragon. No wonder it can comprise an entire freaking zone, or at least the top half of it. Imagine an alive one. And then the cool thing, and you may be wondering, what's this gonna do with like a blue Odogaron? Well, the cool thing is that in the back of Odogaron's lair, there is two blue glowing rocks. And these are from Dalamadur. You see, while fighting him, occasionally he would spit blue fire into the air, and they would come raining down as meteors. Every now and then, one would get stuck into the ground instead of exploding, and you could mine it. Sadly, you can't mine these, though that would be really cool if you could get Dalamadur materials, but there's no armor. And it's a remnant and still glowing power of a Dalamadur that has died there. And to say the Dalamadur has rotted away to a skeleton and it's still glowing? 
Well, that has some pretty impressive lasting power. Granted, the effluvium and the uh, bacteria that just destroys its way through flesh and, you know, propagates this cycle of death and a rebirth and the breaking down of the veil. And it's such a dark area, so different from any other zone in Monster Hunter. It's such a stark contrast. It's, it's so creepy and unnerving. I mean, imagine it in real life. An entire area that's essentially squishy underfoot because it's coated in corpses of various stages of decay, the dead and the dying, very few things alive, very few things growing, stirring, in this eerie, obviously foul smelling place that's just filled to the brim with decay. It's just, when you actually stop to look, think, and accept what the Rotten Veil is, it's overwhelmingly ah, oh. And I, I love that, right? It, it's beautiful in its own horrific way. It's such an awesome zone, especially tying it into the lore with it's where Elder Dragons come to die, and the bodies, the physical bodies fuel the Coral Highlands, and then their spirit turns into streamstones and fuels this almost magic energy and power in the recess. Imagine how much energy got transferred when Mr. Dalmadur came down and died. But when I was getting at, and by the way, in the Valhazark room, that big like orange glowing cave behind him is the entrance to the Elder's Recess. It's a tunnel that takes you there. It matches up on the world map, which is probably why Val's there. He can kind of seep off it a little bit. But, I mean, it's a testament to the effluvium that they got through an adult Dalamadur so quickly that his rocks are still glowing. But yeah, if you lure a Dogaron into the back and get him to attack the rocks, you can't do this yourself, it will activate them, It'll explode outwards and coat the area in Dalamadur does blue fire, and then if you lure an ogre on through that, it will set him on fire, dealing in a really appreciable amount of damage, and giving him this awesome blue glowy effect. I can't imagine how cool it would be to do that on top of his normal bonus extra enrage if he eats some meat while exhausted and starts glowing red and blue. And the thing is, standing on these rocks, you take the most damage out of any environmental thing in the game. It kills you faster than the acid in the veil, which is just going to show the power of the Dalamadur. So yeah, I, I just wanted to stress this, I really did. It, this might be such a redundant video to a lot of you, but just the idea that a uh, thousand meter long giant snake elder dragon slithered its way over to the new world at some point and died in the veil? I mean, does that not give you a shudder of excitement, dread, and anticipation of what could happen in the future of this game? Like, that is mental. It really, really is. So there you go, guys. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you already knew that, or at least let, at least let me let me know if you learned something new from this. That would be that would be cool. But like if you've enjoyed it, share it around if you did, and subscribe for more. Oh, good boy. Rage gaming with the video float. But well, that's all that's really relevant at the mo. But I'm still gonna leave this up so you patrons know that I love you even though the outro's no longer that kind of relevant. But the new one's being worked on and it's gonna be a truly badass song. And don't worry, I won't be doing any rapping on it. I'm gonna go now. Uh, this was shit.